In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a click track or metronome track in Audacity so that you can listen to it while you're playing along for an in-time performance. Hey everyone, Joe here. Here we are on Audacity. We're going to set up a click track. It's not quite as simple as in some other DAWs uh, where you can just load up a plugin and then change all the controls on the fly. Um, you have to generate a, a, a click track, a generate an audio track. Um, that you can play to. So first you need to go to Generate and then you want to go to Rhythm Track. Um, so it's not obvious because it doesn't call it a click track or a, a metronome tra track, um, but it is. it works the same way. So it brings up this Rhythm Track window. The first and most important setting you have on there, of course, is your tempo or BPM. You can go from 30 to 300 BPM and also your your timing of beats per bar. So we're just going to go for a standard 4-4, four, four, uh, 120 BPM. You can add swing to it. And then this is where you set the length. Um, so think about the song you're recording. Think about how many bars it has in it. If you've got sheet music or anything, or you've written it yourself, you, you, should, you should know. Um, and yeah, just generate a little bit over what you need because you can always delete it after we're going to mute it obviously not going to be exporting your track with the click on so let's just let's just call it uh 120 bars for now just to show you and then you can change the sound of it i don't really like the metronome tick i prefer the cowbell it's a bit less harsh um and then you can change the pitch of the the first beat of the bar and then the rest of the beats in the bar. So if you want them all the same, um, you'd change those all to the same. But I do like having a stronger first beat just to just so you know where you are. You can listen to it first before generating it by clicking preview. I'm gonna bring that down a bit, that's a little bit harsh. And then once you're happy with that, you're gonna be clicking OK. You can see that there's already an audio track created for you. So when you click OK, it will just fill that audio track with your click. And we've got four minutes uh, of click track there. Now, if this isn't quite right to you, if you play it and it's uh, too slow or too fast, unfortunately, you can't just change, um, change the tempo on the fly. You would have to go and generate another rhythm track with a different BPM. So I'm going to record a little bit of bass over the click. Before you start recording, you want to check one setting. You want to go into File, uh, sorry, Edit Preferences, recording and then you've got play other tracks while recording overdub so you want that ticked um, because if it's if it's off you won't be able to hear the other tracks uh, so the click you won't be able to hear it so that's on already so we click OK we'll go back to the beginning and I'm gonna leave four um, four bars before I start just so we've got a little bit of time to get into it so when you click record or hit the R key it's going to open up a new audio track for us and we'll be able to record over it. Just make sure if you're recording with a microphone, you've got headphones on, um, ideally closed back headphones so the, the click doesn't bleed onto your recording. So there we have our recording, made it really easy to play in time. You can see I've recorded in stereo, it's just because I was plugged into the second input of my interface. Uh, I would have needed to be plugged into the first input to record in, in mono, but I can just uh, split stereo to mono track and click the cross to delete the first one. So that sounded perfect to me in my ears and it was really easy to play in time. But because Audacity often has a little bit of latency, it's actually not quite lined up perfectly. So if you do have latency issues, um, you can go into Edit Preferences, Devices, and then play around with these late latency. You can try and you can try and bring the um, the the buffer length down, but it can cause sort of pops and clicks and things depending on your system. So either way, it's not a huge problem. It just means that you're going to have to delete. Uh, delete a little bit of of, uh, of audio before it just to bring it back and then let's go a little bit more for where the transient is so 
and then it will be in time. There we go. So when you're finished and when it's time to export your track, um, you're not going to be wanting the click in the background. So you can literally just mute it and then when you export, it's only going to pick up your recording. So you can go to File, Export, Save and OK that. And now when we play our, our recording, So that's how you set up a click track in Audacity. It can be a little bit clunky when making changes um, after the fact. Hopefully in the future we will get um, real-time plugins with a click track that you can change um, just on the fly. I do tend to use click tracks when recording. I, I made a video on this about why I think it's a great idea to use click tracks. I'll leave a link on the on, in, on the screen now and in the description. And if you try this, then let me know in the comments section below. It'd be great to get a conversation going. And for more mixing, recording, audacity, tips and tricks and tutorials, just hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.